No, these are not my glasses. Hello everyone, my name is Carrie Walker and I am going to try and make this video brief. I wasn't sure if I wanted to film this video because I didn't want to come off as like bragging or trying to like knock myself down in any way, but I was talking with my friend and I decided that I would make this video because I know a lot of people are interested in what different students' stats are and I also know personally that I just enjoy watching videos like these. So I thought I would share with you guys what my high school stats are and how it got me into the college that I am going to. So really quick, I did just want to say that I am not in any way trying to brag at all or trying to knock myself down at all. I am very happy with the things that I have accomplished and I am not trying to rub it in anyone's faces or anything like that. I am simply just trying to share with you guys my scores, my stats, and everything like that. So I am currently committed to UVA and I am very excited to be going there. I applied to seven different colleges, UVA, FSU, UNC at Chapel Hill, Vanderbilt, Johns Hopkins, UPenn, and Yale. And out of those seven schools, I only got into FSU and UVA, which means that I got rejected from five of my seven schools. I know. I honestly thought that I would get into a little bit more than two of my seven schools, but you know what? It's totally okay, and I am still, again, very proud of the things that I have accomplished. So with all of that being said, I wanted to share with you guys my different stats and extracurriculars and everything like that, which then led to my decision results. So in today's video, I am planning on telling you guys my sophomore, junior, and senior classes, my GPA, my extracurriculars, and my SAT and ACT scores. So let's just jump right in. Alright, so I have my computer here just with all of my notes of everything, so it's easy for me to just like knock them off. And really quick, before I told you guys my classes, I wanted to let you guys know that I did the IB Diploma. The IB Diploma is the most rigorous diploma that my school offers. It stands for International Baccalaureate, and it's basically just a very thorough way of learning. I learned a lot, it taught me a ton, and it was very challenging. The way that IB works is that you need at least three HL and three SL courses to get the diploma, and the HL courses are two years. There's a lot of stuff in between that, but I won't get into the details. For the IB diploma though, you do take those classes in your junior and senior year. However, in your sophomore year, you're able to take an IB chemistry class, and because I was ahead in math, I was able to take an IB math class early. So for my sophomore year in total, the classes I took were IB math, HL1, IB Chemistry 1, AP US and Comparative Government, English 10 Honors, Latin 3, SGA, and then PE slash Driver's Ed. This was the most rigorous courses that I could have taken in my sophomore year. Most people didn't take the IB Math in their sophomore year because typically you would take that in your junior year. So then moving on to junior year, because I took that math class early in sophomore year, I didn't have something to take in my junior year slot because the way that it works is that math class is a two-year course that you would take in your junior and senior year. And so I was planning on taking the second year of it in my senior year because that's when you have to take the second course. But because I took the first one early, I didn't have something in my junior year. So I ended up taking a dual enrollment math where I basically just took a college course for math instead. So I took multivariable calculus and matrix algebra. And then my other classes were all IB. IB biology, HL1, IB history of the Americas, IB language and literature, HL1, IB Latin 1, IB psychology, SL, and IB theory of knowledge. Again, I took the hardest course load that I could. And then in my senior year, I took IB Math HL2. That's the second year of that math class that I was talking about. IB Biology HL2. IB Geography SL. IB Language and Literature HL2. IB Latin SL. IB Chemistry SL. And then I was also a teacher's assistant for a Math 7 Honors slash Algebra 1 class. So as you can see, in my senior year, I did double in science. I used one of my elective spots, so I was doing Biology and Chemistry. However, I didn't technically take the hardest course that I could have because I chose to be a teacher assistant for my seventh class, which technically isn't a class that you get a grade for, but that was mostly just because I was so burnt out by this time with everything else that I had done throughout high school, so I decided to give myself a little breather. And I'm really thankful that I did because I think I probably would have gone crazy without it. Overall, I took very challenging courses and I was definitely challenged. As for my GPA, before I told you guys what my actual grade point average was, I wanted to let you know that my class size was about 600 to 700, somewhere in between that. We have a very large school. There's about 4,000 kids-ish, give or take, at my school. So we have like six to 700 people in every single grade. With that being said, we don't have any class rank or anything like that. So I don't know who the valedictorian was or where I fall within that scale. However, what I do know is that my GPA was about a 4.5 when I sent it off to colleges. I don't really know what it is right now because senior year isn't over and grades are all crazy right now with the quarantine and school just kind of 
falling apart a little bit. But I do believe that my GPA was about a 4.5 when I sent it off to colleges. Okay, so now for extracurriculars, I, I have a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna pull up the computer here again so I can read off to you guys everything that I did. It's definitely not everything, but I tried to hit the main things. So starting in 10th grade, I did crew. I really loved this sport. It was so time consuming though, so I ended up stopping it for my junior and senior year because I knew I would want to focus on the IB diploma. However, I really loved rowing and it really made my 10th grade year so much better. I also babysat throughout the year and that summer after 10th grade, I actually was babysitting up to seven days a week for this one family because the dad was deployed at the time. So I was a full-time babysitter. And then I was a member of the National Honor Society, Math Honor Society, Latin Club. I also was a part of the Student Advisory Council, which was a county-wide thing that I got elected for. I think it was four people per school that were elected for it. And then we went to these big meetings with everyone where all of those representatives would get together and make decisions, or I guess advise. And then I also was a part of the class council, which was a different group of four. And and there were four students per grade at our school to be the class council. As for 11th grade, 11th grade was my busiest year by far. I feel like it is for most people. Senior year was super crazy because of like IB stuff, but 11th grade was crazy because I did so many extracurriculars. So to start off, I was the district representative of a school board student leadership development program. That is a mouthful, but basically what it means is that I was one of 12 students chosen in my county to basically get to shadow the school board and try and give like student opinions. So over the period of several months I got to attend school board meetings and give my opinions, advice, and everything like that as a student. I represented my school district and then there were 11 other students to represent the other districts within the school system. There are nine school board members and three at-large members so that equals 12. Each member chose a student to represent the district. So I got chosen for my district and I got to be a part of that incredible program which I'm very very thankful for. And then I had also applied for a program called S2M2. This I believe I did in the summer before my 11th grade year. It's basically just a medical program with USIS and Walter Reed. It was an incredible week-long experience and I seriously have made so many incredible memories there and also just learned so much about medicine and there were so many hands-on opportunities that I am just so thankful for. Also in 11th grade, I was the NHS Vice President of Candidates. I was in the school play Almost Maine. I also was in the school musical Mary Poppins. I babysat about two times a week usually. I was the Latin Club historian, still a member of the Math Honor Society. I also joined Latin Honor Society and then I was also on the Principal's Advisory Council which was just a group of students that got to talk with the principal and give student feedback. Those are the main things for 11th grade so let's move on to 12th grade. For 12th grade I was elected the NHS president of the whole National Honor Society. Unfortunately I was never able to do the induction for the new candidates this year because it was actually scheduled for the week that we just had gotten out of with quarantine so I never got to induct the new candidates which is really sad but they're still gonna be a part of NHS you know also the summer before senior year I went back to that s2m2 medical program that I had mentioned and I was the team leader of that so I got to lead a group of students and basically just help guide them throughout the program again that was with Eusis and Walter Reed I also was the stage manager of the school play Miss Electricity I was Latin Club Consul which was basically like a dual president role that I had with one of my friends. I also was no longer able to babysit for the family that I used to be babysitting for because they moved across country, which is really sad, but I still keep in touch with them. But I ended up getting a job as a party princess where I actually got to dress up as different princesses and basically go to parties and be the princess. I seriously love that job more than anything and I've made a couple videos on that if you guys want to check those out. And then I also was still a member of the Math Honor Society, Latin Honor Society, Society and things like that. For the most part, that pretty much sums up my extracurriculars. I definitely didn't touch on everything, but those are the general things. So I did stay pretty involved within my school community as well as doing other things that I didn't talk about within my community community, but those are mostly my extracurriculars that I focused on. And then lastly, the SAT and ACT. If I'm being honest, I think that this is what hurt me the most on my college application. In total, I took the SAT four times, which I will get into in a minute, and I never actually 
took the ACT. Not taking the ACT is one of my biggest regrets, I think, because just based off of the things that I've heard, it sounds like something that I would like a lot more. And I know for sure I do not like the SAT and it was not very nice to me. But to be fair, I really didn't take advantage of my SAT test taking. All right, we're whipping the computer back out for this one. So I took my first SAT on March 10th in 2018, which is in my sophomore year of high school. I was actually recommended by my teacher to take it earlier because I was ahead in math. And the SAT has a lot of algebra and geometry on it, which I had taken in middle school. So I was recommended to take it a bit earlier so then I wouldn't forget that math and it would be more fresh in my mind. Anyway, so when I first took that SAT, I wanted to have it as like a baseline. I didn't want to study and I just wanted to see how I would do without studying. On that SAT, I got a 1380, which I know is a really good score for some people, but for other people, it can be a really bad score. To me, I was pretty happy with that score for not studying, but I also knew that I was applying to Ivy League schools, so I wanted to bump up my score a bit more. So then I took a second SAT on October 6th, 2018, which is in the beginning of my junior year. Because I was wanting to up my score a bit, I was planning on studying for this SAT. I was wanting to really like sit down, put in my effort, you know, really give it my all and see what I was capable of. But alas, I forget the excuses that I made up and what stuff got in the way. Life was just probably crazy. I don't know. I ended up not studying for that one either and I got a 1410. So I did improve by 30 points, but also I hadn't studied and I really wanted to see what I was able to achieve. Time kept passing by my junior year. A lot of other people were taking the SAT. I was feeling really pressured and everyone knows how crazy junior year is, especially with all of those extracurriculars that I already told you guys about. And it was really hard for me to try and find a good time for me to take the SAT with time in advance to study for it. I pretty much just like pressured myself and was pressured into taking the March SAT on March 9th of 2019, which was towards the middle-ish of my junior year. At the time, I knew I wouldn't have a lot of time to study for it, but I still took it anyway. I ended up studying, I think, for like a week and it was actually my worst SAT and I got a 1350. So it was 60 points worse than my second score, but 30 points worse than my first score. So I was really discouraged by that and obviously not very happy because not only had I not studied for it, but it was also my worst SAT. And I knew that colleges would want to see improvement and then here I was jumping back 60 points. And so because I had digressed so much, I knew that I really had to improve on my fourth SAT. This was kind of like an all or nothing kind of deal for me. I realized that four SATs were a lot of times to take the SAT, even though you don't technically get penalized anymore for how many times you take the SAT. But I was just like, man, I really cannot do worse on this one because it would just look so bad if I took four SATs and kept doing worse. So this one really was important. So I ended up taking it on August 24th of 2019, right before my senior year. And of course, I didn't do as much studying as I should have. I definitely pushed it off. I will be honest, I procrastinated it. I just was very overwhelmed by the thought of it and so I kept pushing it off. I kind of wish I had studied for the ACT instead during this time, but for some reason the SAT was just so in my head and I just had to get it done and I don't know. I ended up studying for about two weeks. I really did grind on those two weeks, but two weeks still isn't a ton of time. But when I did end up taking the test, I got a 1420, which super scored to a 1440. So overall, my SAT score is a 1440 with a 690 in reading and writing and a 750 in math. A 1440 is a really good score and I am not complaining about that at all. I'm really proud of myself for achieving that. However, it's kind Kind of like on the bottom range of Ivy League or even like just below it with how competitive it is nowadays I knew that 1440 wasn't a really solid score for the schools that I was applying to however I was really hoping that my extracurriculars would help build me back up however it did not and you know what that is okay I got into UVA and I am so very happy with UVA I have always actually thought that I would end up at UVA so it's kind of funny how those all worked out and honestly even if I did get into the Ivy leagues I don't know if I would go to them just because they're really expensive and I don't want to burn myself out before medical school but it mostly just would have been cool to know that I could have gotten in but I didn't and that's okay and so I just wanted to share my stats with you guys those are the stats that I had and I still got rejected honestly I'm really proud of myself I think I have a really solid resume and I know that I have good scores and I'm not in any way trying to make you guys feel bad for me or think I'm so great or anything I am seriously just trying to give you guys 
guys my stats in the most objective way possible. I feel like I kind of was really robotic in this video because I was literally reading off a list. And I got on these crazy glasses that I never normally wear. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And hopefully you can get some use out of my stats in whatever way you would like. If there's any other questions that you guys have, make sure to comment them down below. And I will do my best to answer them. Subscribe to my channel while you're at it. And give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. And I guess I will see you guys in my next video. Which, if you're seeing this video on the day I upload it, that video will be up tomorrow. So make sure to subscribe to my channel so you're here for when it happens. Anyway. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay happy, stay self. I can't speak. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.